Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ruby Page, and welcome once again to our system performance dialogues. And this, we talk about shaping our systems in these dialogues because the workforce is the community, and the community is the workforce. And today's topic ethical behavior and accountability in leadership, a, a, technical, a technological framework and design for the tracking of blood disorders. And I'm so pleased today we have once again with us, Dr. Laura Thompson. Laura, how are you these days, today? I'm doing pretty well, thank you for asking. How are you doing? Very good, good, good to see you once again. Good to see you again, yes, it's been, it's been, it's been a minute, but it's, it's good. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, um, Laura, what what's uh brought your interest in this particular area um well let's talk um so behind me is a picture of a friend of mine her name is kishma um i've known kishma for pretty much most of my uh, my adult well most of my life um she passed away in uh 2008 she had um the trait of sickle cell on both sides for mom and dad and um, at the time, the doctors really didn't give her a long prognosis for living. I think they told her about 18, but she lived until she was um, 36. And um, she's, and I'm wearing her jacket. Her mom gave me something. So this is her, this is Kishma's jacket. Um, and so this, this story is a little bit personal to me. So, but um, I'm really pleased to be here to talk and to share. Okay. And to celebrate. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, mm -hmm. it's um, World Sickle Cell Day on yes. Sunday as well. So mm -hmm. great, great. So tell us, what, what was the origin of, this, of the research for the study in this particular article that you've written? Well, the origin um, of ethical behavior and accountability um, is, is really a leadership um, discussion. And the origin came from a book that I wrote. It's called um, Root Systems. And the book was about um, out challenges with ethical behavior and accountability in nonprofit leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. And what was the intention of the research and the most significant challenges in, in leadership? Well, um, the intention of the research was to review passive surveillance systems for tracking blood disorders, and sickle cell is one of those blood disorders. So examples of blood disorders, measles, autoimmune disease, um, SCA. Um, and the target population in my study was mainly children, um, but it included anyone who had been tracked um, using the, uh, what they called uh, surveillance systems um, or passive surveillance. And in addition, the study reviewed and assessed other methods towards the development of a framework that could be used for inmate information systems to track disorders. So I fused the idea of the FAME framework with Oz's principle of accountability, which assesses accountability in three areas, which is um, organizational accountability, personal accountability, and also financial accountability. Okay. So that's that that might be a mouthful, but that's that's really <laughs> the, that's really uh, what we what, what I wanted to do in this study. Yeah, I can, we can certainly see the link between all those elements as well. Absolutely. So I noticed in the, in the study you referenced UNESCO, the, the Millennium Objectives for Medicine in Nigeria. How do these connect to the ethical premise within the study? Well, I became interested in UNESCO or in the Millennial Objectives a few years ago. And at that time, the UN had eight objectives mm. um, or eight objectives tracks, um, education and health was one of those tracks. And when I looked at the medicine track, um, I saw that Ni Nigeria was in the top five of countries needing to update its medical standards tracking systems for tracking illnesses. And since my background is in information systems, um, and, I've, and I've been to Nigeria, have friends from Nigeria. I've said, hmm, this is pretty interesting. Let's look into it. So at that time, I had a student who is now, her name, is, her name now is Dr. Kimberly Scott. Um, and she was interested in sickle cell anemia because she had a, she had a trait of it as well. So, I, and she was studying at the time um, health, um, 
health information systems and that sort of thing. And, and so um, I decided to partner with my student at that time and we ran the study. And so at the time we created a model and this model um, was um, a combination of two things. It was a combination of the diagnosed clinical medical codes that we used in the state to, you know, for billing and that sort of thing. Um, and we also fused that with a prototype of a tracking system that contained inputs and outputs. And so we, what we pitched in the article was this prototype, then we published it, and then we quickly realized that this tracking mechanism didn't exist anywhere, and that, that, that gained a lot of popularity, people wanted the transcripts, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Okay, so, so what else did you discover at the time you did that initial study? Well, um, I found out that uh, the UN, um, they, they tracked these, uh, they, they tracked surveillance through their in-depth um, database. There's an in-depth database, um, the Nigerian demographic in, um, surveillance system had two nodes within that database, two node centers or two access points. Mm -hmm. um, one of the nodes was the Nahuche um, um, health demographic um, systems and the other one was Cross Rivers. And these are two communities in Nigeria. Those two nodes are still active today, um, but there are of course different leadership that are taking over the nodes as well. Um, and at the moment, or at that moment, the in-depth um, data, the in-depth database was only tracking like mortality rates. And I, I figured, well, why don't we, and it's in just 16 fields. So 16 fields, 16 columns mm -hmm. and mortality rates. And that's pretty much it. And so the thing that I said, well, it should, it's easy. I know database technology, just add a few fields. Let's see if any of the mortalities that were happening um, were related to sickle cell anemia. And then we might be able to create systems to provide resources in those particular mm -hmm. areas, right? Yeah. Um, it's just, it seems like a simple fix. Mm -hmm. Didn't necessarily happen as, as the way that I wanted to. We had all the cooperation mm -hmm. that we could have, but mm -hmm. um, it was still a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing that I also discovered was that um, there was another study that was done in... Um, 2020, which kind of helps to foster um, and, and explain what's going on in this particular study. And this study was specifically on sickle cell anemia and Nigeria. Um, 291 mothers were found um, that were pregnant that, and, and possibly, and they, they had the trait. And so in the study, the researchers wanted to discover, well, what if we tested you? Mm -hmm. do a pre-test, do a post-test with counseling. And what they discussed, and they had everything set up, the clinicals and everything set up, the support and everything set up. But the challenge was finance, the financial. So okay. for the pre-test screening, it was $1.50 US. Mm -hmm. um, and the Naira, com um, the Naira towards that, it's about, um, let me see, I have to, I have to, I, I'm going to tell you the Naira in a moment. But the actual post test was only twenty dollars U.S., but that's like seven thousand naira at the time. Mm. The mothers didn't; they didn't. Have, the mothers that were in question, they didn't have that resource. Yeah. They didn't have that money. Mm. So how do you get how do you get people to be tested? And it's it's the system. The healthcare systems are different. You know, where you, some people when you go to the hospital. In certain countries, you, everything's paid for. In other places, mm -hmm. you have insurance. In the case of Nigeria, with these women, you have to pay for the test. Yeah, and of course, if you test, you, you may find evidence. And if you find evidence, then there's more things that you have to do. So um, mm -hmm. uh, th these are just really good, striking, um, striking information that I that I that I thought was really interesting to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way, of, of course, the way that we track things may or may not be conducive to what needs to happen, but we can model and then posit what we think should happen and see what type of support that we can provide. Um, so that, those are some of the things that I discovered. Right. Um, and, right. and I do have some ideas about the future. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, so this sounds quite exciting and particularly the way 
the element of discovery as part of this mm. what you're talking about and discovery as it leads to leads to more evidence which can lead to better health outcomes which is really yes. important yes so are there any updates since the project's inception and um, what would you like to see happen with sickle cell research and demographic uh, surveillance in the future well, let's let's just talk about um, public health in general. Um, typically, what should happen, what should happen, is that when dealing with sickle cell, um, there are there are certain things that need to be in place. For example, um, there should be ther new therapy developments. There should be public planning, patient and family planning, and provider education. And I believe that in the 2020 study, um, those things were in place. And, can, and part of the $20 or 7,000 Naira deal, right? So um, th th that's in place, but then the challenge is how do you get engagement from the people? How do you get people to want to do something of this nature? Um, and then also dealing with the potential stigma associated with a person that may find out or discover that they may have something of this nature. So I have some thoughts. Um, perhaps we had the cart before the horse as it relates yeah. to yeah. trying to implement a field, which is so easy to insert a field in a database. I mean, I had access to the persons mm -hmm. over the databases mm -hmm. and it's just about adding a field. Mm -hmm. But once the field is added, then there is the other responsibility of engagement it, to make sure yeah, exactly. that all the, the other services and the implications are in place. and the implications mm -hmm. that surround that. And in a sense, it kind of brings us to the thinking around, you know, the system thinking, uh, yeah. the, you know, the, the, the performance. We're now talking probably about the attitude of clinicians, the culture yeah. of communities. So it does open up a wide area which of course are, are important, but it's, it's something to definitely think about in the future. But I will, I will say, I will pose it this, since financial was the challenge, then I says, okay, well, if money was the real issue, then maybe we can use modern technology. Like for example, we could, um, in honor of sickle cell, we can actually create NFTs that are about $25. And, 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 and mm -hmm. since these, this researcher was only looking for 300 people, let's find either these 300 people or 300 people um, and get them and you know open it up to anybody that wants to support the yeah. test and it would be the cost of like you know a, a, an nft that is like 20 bucks yeah. um, there are ways that you can mint nfts for free and um you can make something like that happen and then so let's see what happens and if there's something that's merit here I'm then we put the policy and the system and everything together yeah. Because in there, again, you'll see our keyword collaboration. Yeah. So you can be looking at, there will be a number of entities where collaboration within this area fits their interest, yeah. which is the most important thing. And then you can make pro progress from there to improve the outcomes for patients, but also building the capacity within the system itself. And technology has no gatekeepers so um it, it's just about thinking thinking you know whole system thinking so i, I think yeah. it's excellent and i look forward to um, the progress you are un undoubtedly going to make yeah and thank you and i also want to get, give thanks to uh, my my former student who is now dr kimberly scott who assisted with the research and one final thing with regards to kishma who I um, was behind me when she was hospitalized. She didn't just sit in the bed. She went to all of the children's rooms and worked even in communication to try to ensure that they were heard. She was a strong advocate for yeah. sickle cell anemia and um, we should continue her work in yeah. whatever way we can. And that's excellent. And as we say, all voices must be heard. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, uh, Thank you. See you again soon. All right, thank you. Bye.